Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are continuing our lesson on borrowing cost. And so we are looking at part two of this borrowing cost. In our previous video, we ended with the components of borrowing cost, trying to explain and understand what goes into borrowing cost. Today we are going to look at the concept of qualifying assets and then looking at when to capitalize and the commencement and the cessation provisions. But before that, let us test our understanding on what we did before we look at the qualifying assets. We are going to test our understanding on the components of borrowing costs by taking a practical question on how to calculate borrowing costs and then trying to calculate for ourselves. Okay, so let us look at this question straight away. On December 1st, 2019, Kojo Chrome Limited began construction of homes for those families that were hit by the flood disaster and were homeless. The construction is expected to take 3.5 years. It is being financed by issuance of bonds for $7 million at 12% per annum. The bonds were issued at the beginning of the construction. The bond carry a 1.5% issuance cost. The project is also financed by issuance of share capital with a 14% cost of capital. Kojo Chrome Limited has opted under IS23 to capitalize borrowing costs required. Compute the borrowing cost that needs to be capitalized in 2019 under IES 23. Okay, so we have this question. Now we are told that Kojo Chrome Limited constructed homes, okay, for homeless people and it's expected to take three and a half years to complete. Okay, and they have gone for some funds. Now listen very carefully. The objective is to calculate borrowing cost. The objective is to calculate borrowing cost. We are told that they have opted to capitalize borrowing cost. Of course, this is a qualifying asset. I will explain the concept of qualifying assets afterwards. So the objective here is to calculate borrowing cost. And I've given you the components of borrowing cost. What it means is that you need to go through the question. If there is anything there that belongs to the components of borrowing cost, it's inclusive. If there is anything there that is not supposed to be part of borrowing cost, don't be tempted. Don't be tempted. That's the meaning. So going back to the question, we are told that they finance it by two sources. They issued bonds and they issued share capital. Remember that in the scope of IS23, I told you that share capital and its cost are not part of borrowing cost. So even though it's in the question, it comes with a cost of capital of 14%. Don't be tempted. It's just there to confuse you, I beg you. Your objective is to calculate borrowing costs. So your focus should be on the components of borrowing costs that I gave you. So we are told that it's being financed by the issuance of bonds for $7 million as 12% per annum. So once it's per annum, you know that the only per annum related to borrowing costs is interest. Okay, so that is interest, 12% interest on the $7 million. And we are going to use that to calculate, the, we are going to add the interest to our borrowing costs, exactly. We are also told that the bonds were issued at the beginning of the construction. The bonds carry 1.5% issuance cost. What is the meaning of issuance cost? Issuance cost is that at the time of issue, when they were issuing the bonds, they incurred some cost. Instead of them telling us the exact amount of money they incurred, they have given it as a percentage on the principal amount that they want to um, raise, which is the $7 million. And so that 1.5% of the $7 million is going to give us the issuance cost. And ladies and gentlemen, the issuance cost is ancillary cost. I gave you ancillary cost as part of borrowing cost. And I gave you a condition that whenever there is ancillary cost, it is not per annum, it is for the entire duration of the loan. And so if you want to add ancillary cost to your borrowing cost, you amortize. So we are going to do amortization of this ancillary cost, 1.5%. We divide it by the useful life of the loan, which is a 3.5%. And then we are going to add it to the borrowing cost for the 2019 financial year. I'm sure it is becoming understandable. Okay. And then we are also told that the project is also financed by issuance of share capital, 
with a 14% cost of capital. And that is where you should be careful of because cost of capital is 14% for share, ordinary share capital is not part of borrowing costs. So we ignore that. It will not appear anywhere in our computation. So imagine going to the exam hall and meeting this question. When you didn't understand or you have not learned to understand the components, you may be tempted to calculate 14% on that figure and add it to your total borrowing cost for the year, which will render your work wrong. Okay, so please, let us learn and understand the concept very well. So that is all. We have only two components in this question, the interest and the ancillary cost. And I, you know ancillary cost should be amortized all the time, so take note. Uh -huh. So we have the interest and so there is nothing like exchange rates loss there is nothing like premiums or discount in this question and there is no uh, finance charges or finance costing or finance lease so only two components so we we'll say borrowing cost we are calculating our borrowing cost to capitalize that is the solution okay so the first thing we are going to do is to calculate the interest and then the interest is 12 percent on seven million dollars and that is going to give us eight hundred and forty thousand uh, sorry dollars eight hundred and forty thousand dollars all right so this is the interest and then let's look at the ancillary cost or the issuance cost so issuance cost the issuance cost is 1.5 percent and it will also be on the 7 million but remember that whatever answer you have whatever figure you have is for the entire duration of the loan which is the three and a half years and so we need to amortize the answer so all over 3.5 years this is how to go about the ancillary cost you always have to divide whatever result you have over the useful or the term of the loan and that is going to give us thirty thousand dollars okay and so when we add we add eight hundred and eight hundred and forty thousand dollars to thirty thousand dollars we have eight hundred and seventy thousand dollars as our borrowing cost to be capitalized for kojo chrome limited very very simple very easy it has become very simple and easy because we spent time to understand the components of borrowing costs. Other than that, somebody would have picked the 14% cost of capital for <laughs> the equity shares and would have added and it will be bomb. All right. <laughs> okay, so this is how to solve question on borrowing costs. Now let us move on to the concept of a qualifying asset. We are moving to the concept of a qualifying asset. All right, so a qualifying asset that is the next concept you are looking at qualifying assets what is a qualifying asset it is something that we have been meeting a lot in borrowing costs what is a qualifying asset now a qualifying asset is an asset which takes substantial period of time to construct or make ready for use I repeat, an asset which takes a substantial period of time to either construct or to make it ready for use. A substantial, the emphasis is on the word substantial, not just a period of time, but a substantial period of time. So it means that if there is an asset which is ready for use on the day of acquisition, of, then it means that it's not a qualifying asset. That means that it includes inventories that may... The only time an inventory may be a qualifying asset is when that inventory took years to make ready. That inventory took years. But other than that, inventories that are engaged in our normal trading operation, like the inventories that we produce day in and day out in our normal trading business, cannot be part of qualifying assets. Assets that are ready for use on the day of acquisition, like you bought um, the asset today and you started using the asset today you bought a printer today you started using the printer today the printer cannot be called a qualifying asset because it didn't take a substantial period of time to make it ready for use but for a building that you take like five years to build it's a qualifying asset once it's going beyond an accounting year 
two years, three years before it gets re it becomes ready for use. Then we call it a qualifying asset. Now take note. At the beginning of the lesson, we looked at a question and we said that we are tossed between two options as to whether we should capitalize borrowing cost or we should treat it as part of period cost as expense. The answer is that if the asset in question that you are using the money to construct is a qualifying asset, then you capitalize the borrowing cost as part of the cost of a qualifying asset. But if it is not a qualifying asset, then borrowing cost will be treated as expense for the period. That is the answer. So we only capitalize borrowing costs that are arising because of the construction of a qualifying asset. That is the meaning. All right, so a qualifying asset is an asset that takes a substantial period of time to construct. So we are going to take two different scenarios, like a question. But this question is more of a theoretical analysis. I'm going to look at a scenario with you. The only thing that the question will ask for us to do is to tell whether the asset involved is a qualifying asset or the asset is not a qualifying asset before we begin with borrowing costs that are eligible for capitalization in terms of the specific funds and the general borrowing. We will solve some more examples on estimating borrowing costs. But let us first of all test our understanding. So we are going to look at two different scenarios and then we will see which one is a qualifying asset and which one is not a qualifying asset. So let us look at the first scenario and then let's see. Order Unlimited engaged a consulting firm to advise it on many projects that it had been planning to undertake in order to diversify its operations and enhance its public image and ratings. With this mandate, the consulting firm set out to prepare a feasibility study for the construction of a shopping mall that would house anchor tenants such as world-class international designers and well-known global retail chains. The consulting firm advised Ordan Limited that this kind of a project would do wonders to its corporate image. This shopping mall had certain distinguishing features that were unique in many respects and it could easily win the coveted title of the most popular commercial complex in the country. Based on this advice, Ordan Limited began construction of the shopping mall on a huge plot of land in the heart of the city. Substantial amounts were spent in its construction. Architects from around the globe complete, competed for the project and the construction was entrusted to the best construction firm in the country. The construction took over two years from the date of the project's launch. The total cost of construction was financed by a term loan from an international bank required. Would the shopping mall be considered a qualifying asset under the standard? That's the first question. Would the interest expense on the firm, or on the, sorry, would the interest expense on the term loan borrowed for the construction of the shopping mall qualified as eligible borrowing cost for capitalization? So that is the first scenario. So we are looking at the construction of a shopping mall. A, 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 a consulting firm has advised or done limited and they have designed the plan and everything and the construction is beginning. They've entrusted it into the hands of a contractor, whatever. There were so many things he said in here. But the most important part is from where they said or done limited began construction of the shopping mall on a huge plot of land in the heart of the city. Substantial amounts were spent on this construction. Architects from around the globe, whatever. And they say that the construction took two years from the day the project was launched. Once it was more than one year, it took two years to complete. Then it's a qualifying asset. Okay, so answering the question that we were asked, would a shopping mall be considered as a qualifying asset under the standard? Yes, it should be considered as a qualifying asset because it took a substantial period of time to construct the mall. That is the meaning. Very, very simple. And we also asked, would the expense from the money or the term loan that were used to build the mall be considered as 
eligible borrowing costs for capitalization, that is also a yes. Once the asset is a qualifying asset, then the borrowing costs thereof are eligible for capitalization together with the cost of the assets. So that is very simple. We are done with this scenario. Very easy. So let us look at another scenario, another simple scenario. And then let's look at it. Now, this scenario we are going to look at is also related to the same Ordan Limited and the same consulting firm. But let's look at a different scenario. The consulting firm also advised Ordan Limited to launch a car dealership that deals only in world-renowned expensive brand names such as Rolls Royce and Alfa Romeo. According to the research study undertaken by the consulting firm, this would be yet another business to diversify and invest in order to enhance the corporate image of Ordan Limited with people who matter as such an exclusive car dealership would cater only to the needs of the top management of multinational corporations operating in the country. Ordan Limited invested in the business by borrowing funds from major local banks. Beside the corp corporate guarantees, Ordan Limited gave to the banks. Okay, let me take that again. Besides the corporate guarantees Ordan Limited gave to the banks, they also insisted on depositing with the bank's title deeds of the cars as security for their loans until the entire loan amount remains unpaid. Then requirements. Would the expensive cars purchased by the car dealership be considered qualifying assets under the standard, thereby making it possible for Ordan Limited to capitalize the borrowing cost? Would borrowing cost, including the guarantee commission and the interest rate, be capitalized as part of the borrowing cost? All right, so the answer is simple. I'm sure you have already answered yourself. This asset is not a qualifying asset. This is a car. A car is an asset when you, a motor vehicle, when you buy, it is ready for use the same day you buy it. You are not the one going to construct it. So it does not take a substantial period of time to prepare and make it ready for use. And because it doesn't take a substantial period of time to prepare and make the car ready for use, the car does not fall under the category of a qualifying asset. And because it doesn't fall into the category of a qualifying asset, then it means that borrowing costs, the interest and all those things that are related will not be eligible for capitalization. That is the meaning of qualifying assets. I'm sure we are done with the understanding of qualifying assets. Okay. We are left with one more important area to go. That is specific funds and borrowing. Uh, that is specific funds and general borrowings. How to treat them. How to calculate borrowing costs when the funds are specifically for the pro project. And how to also calculate borrowing costs if the borrowing was a general borrowing or general pool of funds that you are going to use and then construct the qualifying assets. In, which, in whichever case, we are going to solve two questions. One for each of the scenarios, borrowing costs for specific funds and then for general funds and then we'll just talk about the commencement and cessation provisions and then we'll be done with borrowing costs okay and then maybe the disclosures will also be mentioned as well but the most important for the calculation is the specific funds and the general funds and so that is going to be in the next video in our next video i'm going to solve a question on specific funds and on general funds and then we'll conclude on borrowing costs Remember to subscribe to this channel, share this video, let others also have a benefit. Until we meet again another time, it is bye for now.